When I first started this channel, it really was just about talking about crypto and digital assets. But as I've gone forward, I've made plenty of mistakes. And just like Warren Buffett says, you have to learn from mistakes. They don't just don't have to be your mistakes. So learn from these screw ups. And this is why I have these five rules to help me not lose even more. So what we're talking about, of course, is the five rules. Now you've seen these below me for numerous videos for the last couple of years, but it goes like this, there's five. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. 100% scams, meaning everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't trust anybody, not even me. 0% exchanges, don't leave your crypto on exchanges. 0% leverage, don't use leverage and take profits along the way because nobody ever went broke taking profits. And to break this all down, when I say it's all gone, don't invest more than you can afford to lose, right? If you're looking at like a $20 and you're in a cold sweat going, man, if I lose this 20 bucks investing into Bitcoin or altcoins or memes, my wife's going to kill me or I'm going to be broke. You have no business investing right now. Hold on to the 20 bucks. Make sure that you have some kind of reserve, six months at least, and go from there. But if you're looking at like a stack of like, okay, if I lose like a couple hundred bucks here and there, I'll be okay. Doesn't matter what it is. Just make sure that whatever you lose, you're okay with losing it because that's the whole point of investing. We like it to go up, but we have to prepare ourselves for the underside. And when I say don't invest more than you can afford to lose, the reason why is because altcoins, as far as 2021 goes, this is a report from CoinGecko, almost 6,000 went to zero. Not like they became undervalued, they went to zero. So remember when you think about this, like, oh, I can just dollar cost average and keep putting money into it. Nope. On some of these, you're never going to get your money back because they are dead. And when I talk about this, there's a difference between altcoins and Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin has had some major slides, negative 91% in 2011, negative 81% looking at 2014. In 2018, yeah, it went down 83%. In 2022, 74%. But there's a difference between losing out and a reduction in value as opposed to going to zero. If you would have hold, held from 2011 when Bitcoin was a couple of bucks, $20 maybe, and right now it's around 63,000, you don't care about these uh, reductions in value. You just think to yourself, hey, those are just dips and I'm okay with that. So again, big difference between Bitcoin and altcoins. And moving on, this is another bigger one that I think everybody needs to understand. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. You can't trust anybody, even myself. Here are some scams that I see. When you take a look in your emails, make sure like this is from Celsius, and it says to, of course, me. But when you click on the from, you'll notice that it's at e.express soil. And of course, they wanted me to click on something and whatever else. So always take a look at where it's from because you figure out pretty quick that, hey, this isn't the right domain. This isn't the right address. Uh, they're trying to scam me out. Also, you're going to see these AI generated ones. You could see something like with Michael Saylor. You could see something like with Charles Hoskinson. It's always the same thing, though. Send me one Bitcoin or send me 10 Ethereum and I'll send you double back. Nobody is sending you any free money. Don't be ridiculous. So just when you see something like this, just go, that's a scam. And also, if you're on DEXs, you might uh, like, hey, I want to get this next meme coin called Pepe or, what, or, or Costco hot dog or whatever else it is or Tuker. So when you, when you uh, put, fill this out, you might put in Pepe and you get like 20 different results. Don't do that. Go to CoinGecko, find the right one. Usually it's by market cap. It's not, a, you know, number 1,250. It's actually in the top, whatever it is, maybe the top couple of hundred. You're going to click on the contract address right there. And you're going to type in or excuse me, paste in your contract address so you can find the exact right one. See on the left, there's a bunch of them. See on the right, there's only one. That's the power of a contract address. Or also you may see something like this. And this is one that's most important. These are poison types of scams. And what this is, a trader lost $68 million. And what they do, because they sent it to the wrong address. Here's how this works. Your wallet and all wallets in crypto are on an open ledger. Anybody can see them. They can see what it is. They don't know who it is. They don't really care, but they can see who it is. What they do is they're going to send you dust or microtransactions, and they're going to try to line those up with the different addresses that you've used in the past. So at some point you might screw up like this guy did. So in this one, you can see the wrong address. The first six letters and numbers are the same as the correct address. The last six letters and numbers are the, are the same as the correct address. And this person just goes, oh, well, they took a look at their wallet. This is my phantom wallet. They go, yeah, that's the same one I use. And they just said, you know what? I'm going to send it away. And then off it went. Now, on phantom and all these different wallets, when you click on the address you used before, it will expand. 
what you're doing is you're looking at the middle parts of it, not just the first four and the last four. I'm guilty of this too. I have stopped doing that. I've double checked, triple checked the different addresses to make sure I have it and done the whole thing, not just the first three or four. And then also, if you want to go even a step further, this is what I do with myself, send a, send a test transaction. If you're sending 68 million or hundred thousand dollars, why don't you just send like a fraction of what you're trying to send and just make sure it gets to the right place. Cause if it doesn't, I'm okay with losing 50 bucks or 15 bucks. I'm not okay with losing $68 million. So just be careful out there. Everything's a scam until pre otherwise. Now the next rule is don't leave anything on exchanges. This is the one that if I wouldn't, if I would have listened to, I wouldn't have lost my six and seven figures on Voyager and Celsius. So this was the hack. And this was actually in 2014. I got in 2017. I should have known, but I didn't listen to the people before me. Again, you have to learn from mistakes. You now it's be yours. So in 2014, Mt. Gox was hacked. 850,000 Bitcoin were gone. And that was worth 450 million at the time. I can't even imagine what it is right now. And I fell victim to Celsius and Voyager. And not FTX, but if I just would have listened to the elders when they said, don't leave things in exchanges, use a cold storage device, I wouldn't have lost so much funds. Now, I figured this out as far as Celsius, and I, and I did a video on it. I said, hey, take all your crypto off of Celsius ASAP. Unfortunately, when this happened, uh, I did a video on 11 a.m. All these videos linked in the description. By 9 p.m., withdrawals were frozen. I tried to take some out, didn't happen. So on June 20th, I, I created these five rules, set them up on all live streams, which you see all the time right now. And on June 22nd, I said, hey, Take all your crypto off of Voyager ASAP because they did an uncollateralized loan to Three Arrows Capital. There's the video right there. July 1st, things were frozen. Did I take everything off? No, but not near as much as Celsius. So at least I learned a little bit. And now I know that it's all about cold storage devices. You can use a Tangem. That's my favorite. Ledger, Tracer, whatever else. Just make sure you understand it. This is the easiest one that I, I found. And since 2018, they have 1 million plus users. Not no hacks to date. So that's why I use Tangem and trust them. Links in the description, 10% off or not. Second to last, don't use leverage. The reason why I talk about this is because I've seen all the time people are like, hey, I figured out day trading. Cool. I'm going to go 50X, 100X on leverage trading. You can do that, but there's constant different stories about people losing their life savings. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when you actually lose everything. So I say don't use leverage. And then lastly, and this is the hardest part for people to understand for some reason, take profits along the way. Look, I like Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, all that stuff, right? I like real estate. I, I like investing into assets that I can hold. But I know that all this stuff isn't true wealth. And I, and I wrote this in a post in February. I said, true wealth is your health. A healthy person has a thousand wishes. A sick person only has one. If you have your health, you have everything. True wealth is your health. Make sure you take care of it. The time you spend with your family, the experiences you enjoy with your friends, a peace of mind. Bitcoin, altcoins, all different assets can help you get those things, but it is not those things. If you want to hold on to Bitcoin and be homeless and sick, that's fine. I'm just telling you, Bitcoin is a tool to get you to where you want to go. But the problem with taking profits is FOMO, right? People say, hey, this 2x, it could 10x, it could 20x, and it always holds you, holds you back from taking profits. That's why I'm always preaching, take profits, because nobody ever went broke taking those profits. But there's some things that come up that make you not want to take profits. Predictions, what people say in public with what they say in private, or a plan of action that doesn't match up with somebody else. What I'm talking about here is price predictions. You're going to see these price predictions and go, oh, well, this is going to go to a million. Why would I sell at 60,000 for Bitcoin? Or, oh, Ethereum's going to you know, 50,000. Why would I sell at 2,000? It makes no sense. Everybody's predictions are wrong. They don't know when it's going to happen. They're just guessing. And the one that actually gets it right has been predicting or saying this is gonna happen for like the last 50 times and they've missed the last 50 times. And then when it hits like, see, told you so. Tim Draper has been calling for 250,000 Bitcoin for years. And then he just said, hey, it might happen, but maybe it's me two years later. And when it doesn't hit, he's gonna say, eh, maybe in five years. Tom Lee's been wrong. Arthur Hayes says 70,000 this year. We already hit 73,000. Kathy Wood said a million in 2030. Maybe, sure. Pantera, 148. Adam Back, uh, one of the original uh, Bitcoin contributors. He said 100,000 by uh, the halving on April 20th, 2024. Right now we're in May, hasn't hit that. So he was wrong. JP Morgan's wrong. Robert Kiyosaki, he's, he's, he's increased it. Novogratz and Senator Charter has been so wrong every single time. They'll say 120,000 one week and 50,000 the next week. They're 
they're just wrong. And then you'll, you'll, you're going to keep hit it, hearing these price predictions. Jack Dorsey, a million by, by 2030. Sure, it could all happen. And I hope it does because I, I own a lot of Bitcoin. I would have happy, but I'm just telling you, take profits along the way, usually tends to work out. And the reason, some of the other reasons why you don't do it is because the people in public is what they do in private. Publicly, Peter Thiel was on the Bitcoin conference in 2022, said it was great, they're investing heavily, they really believe in the, in the technology, they're all in. But what he didn't mention was that months ago, they had offloaded their entire cryptocurrency portfolio of an eight-year bet. So they can say like in public, this is what we're doing. And I don't fault Peter Thiel, he's an investor. He's a very, very profitable investor. But behind the scenes they are like, yeah, we believe in it, but you know, we sold a big chunk. Would have been nice to know. And then there's Michael Saylor. No problem with this guy either. He's great. He's great for Bitcoin. And he tells you, you never sell your Bitcoin. Never. And it makes sense for him. MicroStrategy, when they first started getting into Bitcoin August 7, 2020, when they first announced it, the price stock went up and went pretty much parabolic. And it was a great move for them. But remember, MicroStrategy has been around since the dot-com era. And the last time they did that great for their stock was back then. And then for about 20 years or so, it was pretty flat. I mean, there was some good, good years and bad years. We get it, right? But then the big, the big catalyst for the parabolic run was Bitcoin. And why is that? It's great for MicroStrategy, the company, the corporation, because Michael can now take $260 million of profit from the shares as it goes up. Makes sense. If you are the same way and you're a billionaire and, and it's good for your company, keep at it, man. Good for you. But I just remind that if Bitcoin is as great as everybody says it's going to be, and it might, I hope it is. I own a lot of Bitcoin. I just think that you don't need 10, 20, 30, 1,000 Bitcoin to be to have that happiness, to, to spend that time with your family, to take care of everything. You just need a little bit, especially if we're talking about global in the billions. And this is from my buddy, Tom Crown. He said, you can be in the top 0.1% just by buying a little bit and taking profits along the way. But then people will say, and the last thing about this is, you don't understand Michael Saylor saying that if you do something like this, you can be able to use this for good services and assets. For assets, if you wanna buy like a house or something like that, right now you need to give away your Bitcoin keys and have somebody custody it so they can, that's their collateral. They can give you funds so you can buy the house, to buy the real estate, to, to buy a new business, whatever else. But we've talked about this before, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. When you give it away to people like Voyager, Celsius, Sam, and FTX, for collateral or for loans, this is what happens. You get screwed over. So there's that aspect, but people will also say, but Rob, you can use Bitcoin for goods and services. And that one, I totally believe. And I see that is where we, we find the most value because we can use Bitcoin and we can actually have real utility and it can be used. But right now, it doesn't really work that well because because of ordinals, because of, uh, which is essentially NFTs in the blockchain, because of runes, which are essentially meme coins on layer one blockchain Bitcoin, the transaction fees are very high. So it's like between 12, 20, sometimes even $100 for a Bitcoin transaction, depending on how congested the actual network is. So at this point, I don't think it's really going to work. Maybe when layer two has come along, around, I can see that. But right now, just take it with a grain of salt and I got you. And then as far as like getting away from Bitcoin and altcoins, just remember a dash of salt. If you're going to say, well, I'm never going to take profits because I'm just going to ride this out and just dollar cost average. If you did that with dash, you would have made very little over four years, eight years. And especially right now in 2024, you're still underwater. And salt, it never came back. Just like the very first slide we talked about from CoinGecko, we're over almost 6,000 are dead. And then of course, if we're talking about profits, let's not forget the big elephant in the room, Terra Luna, as it went from, I wanna say, it was over hundreds of dollars uh, per token, and it went to zero overnight. But if you would have taken profits, you would have been up massively, my friend. And it doesn't matter if it's a 10X, 20X, 50X, take some profits along the way because you never know when the next Luna is going to be. And lastly, I'll just say this. If you're looking for indicators or things what I'm looking for as, as far as to like actually sell my crypto and some of my Bitcoin, there's two videos. One is one we're talking about the blue chips, Bitcoin and everything below in the top 100, we would say. And I talk about when I'm selling, why and when, link in the description. Now for more risky aspects, altcoins and meme coins, I do a separate one, which is we do a half and half method and go check those out. Again, links in the description. And that's it for today. So look, 
you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about, especially moving into hopefully a blow off top in, in 2024 and 2025 is time sensitive. So that's it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.